Until the jetway was invented, all passengers had to board airplanes by walking outside onto the tarmac and climbing a set of portable stairs. This was often inconvenient for travelers because of weather conditions and the ability to change flights quickly. The first jetway with a covered corridor was installed by Delta Airlines at Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport in May 1961, and American airports adopted them across the country. There was a time when smoking was acceptable in many public places, including airports. Airplanes were even equipped with ashtrays installed in armrests so that passengers could enjoy a cigarette during the flight. But when the Surgeon General started warning the public about the dangers of cigarettes, airports began to slowly restrict where passengers could smoke. When cigarettes were first banned on certain flights, the most congested area in the airport wasn't the baggage claim, but rather the first pedestal ashtray that passengers encountered as they exited the gate. Today, smoking restrictions at many airports are so tight that folks have to stand 20 feet or more outside the exit doors of the building. Tightened security after 9-11 now prevents friends and family members from walking to the gate to greet arriving passengers or to hug them tightly before they depart. Surprising someone when they landed by meeting them at the gate was something that many people remember fondly. Passing through the security checkpoint now requires a boarding pass, so the closest you can get is meeting them in the baggage claim area, which is a little less exciting. Watching airplanes take off and land was a free and exciting activity that a lot of kids enjoyed with their parents back in the day. So much so that almost every airport had an observation area outside the security checkpoint where the public could sit for hours to watch and even photograph the planes that flew in and out. Remember the wall of payphones you could find in every airport concourse? These were popular stops for travelers so they could update their friends and family or make a business call. There would be lines of people waiting their turn to make a call by inserting coins. But today, you would be hard-pressed to find one of these in an airport. And that line you now see people standing in is most likely for a charging station. Through the 1950s and 60s, being an air hostess, or air stewardess, as it became known, was seen as a very elite career. But conditions to become a stewardess were very strict. Only young, unmarried females were accepted, and their overall appearance was very important. If you wanted to get married, you had to resign, and by the time you were 30, you had to retire. This was a time when the uniforms were very form-fitting, and they would often wear hats, high heels, and white gloves, so the glamour of flying was maintained. The barobed followers of Krishna handing out flowers while soliciting donations at every major airport was so common in the 1970s and 1980s that it was parodied in TV and movies. Tighter security combined with a ban imposed at Los Angeles International Airport eventually prevented the Hare Krishnas from approaching travelers as they tried to catch their flight. Back in the heyday of flying the friendly skies, airlines would generously hand out food to hungry travelers. Airline food served in coach was always something we complained about, but once it was gone, we instantly wanted it back. Today, you're lucky to get a free pack of peanuts or pretzels on a long flight. And don't get me started on the complimentary blanket and pillow. For many years, there were kiosks at the airport with smiling personnel ready to sell you life insurance in order to take advantage of a nervous flyer. The pre-flight insurance business slowly fizzled out because air travel became more affordable and common, and people didn't view flying as a dangerous endeavor, and the insurance kiosks began to disappear.
If your flight happened to be delayed and you didn't feel like reading, watching TV was one way to make the time pass quickly. Most airports had a section of TV chairs that featured coin-operated televisions, which would provide 30 minutes of local programming for 25 cents. Today, TVs are mounted pretty much everywhere, not to mention you can watch anything you want on your phone. Remember when flying on an airplane was considered a privilege and a special event? The whole family would dress up in their best clothes just to sit on a plane for a few hours. Men wore suits with ties, and women wore their best dresses, which was typical for flying during the 1950s and 1960s. As with other outings of the time, more time was spent on how we dressed before leaving the house, and flying was no different. Today, comfort is the way people fly, with sweatpants and slip-on shoes becoming the norm. Let me know in the comments if I missed any of your favorite things about heading to the airport that no longer exist, because so much has changed over the decades, and airports are no exception. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.